eye cartographers, Dr. Jason Van Horn, professor of geography here at Calvin University. In this third installment of looking at the transition from ArcMap or ArcGIS to ArcGIS Pro, I want to show you the tightly coupled integration of ArcGIS Online inside of ArcGIS Pro. So let's get started now. Here you can see we're back to the new project one that we created in the first video in this series. And what we're going to do is look at the catalog. If your catalog view happens to be closed like this and it's disappeared, you can always find it under view and catalog pane. Okay, so here at the top, you see you have four options, project, portal, computer, and favorites. We covered project and favorites in episode two. And here I want to show you portal. If you click on portal, you might see some contents here. In this case, because I'm logged into my organizational account, I have access to all of the ArcGIS.com portal details and folders and layers and web maps and everything that I've created inside of my contents pane inside of ArcGIS.com. And so depending upon the kind of portal that you have, perhaps you have a connection straight to ArcGIS.com, or maybe you have an internal organization portal, you will see something in here. If you're not logged into your organizational account, then of course you won't have anything here, okay, for my content in your portal. You can also see you have favorites here, you have your organization level for groups, you have your organization level overall. You also have ArcGIS Online. So ArcMap does have the integration of ArcGIS Online. If you log into ArcMap with your organizational account, you'll have a pop-up window that will show ArcGIS Online. And if we click on this, then we could search ArcGIS Online for any served layers or web maps or applications that are out there. We can use this filter option to actually choose different kinds of things, item types, or even date modified and sharing and status and all of these kinds of things related to any topic that we're interested in. Let's just say that we're interested in soils. So I'll just type in soils here and just see what we get. I'll hit enter. And now we're going to see all of the ArcGIS online options available for soils. And maybe we're interested in just, you know, a particular kind of uh, layer and we could we can specify that here or maybe we just want everything. So I could grab USA Soils here and drag it into my data view and let it go. And now it's going to add in my USA Soil map units because that's what the feature layer is that's being served. In this case, if we uh, hover over it, we see the owner is Esri when it was last modified, and then the path to the web link to be able to see more details. So as I zoom in here to the United States to actually be able to see this layer, you can see it's gray right now, and as we zoom in, it becomes available now. It's light, and so now it will load these soils. So let's see them come in. And there we go. So you can search ArcGIS online for any of these layers. Let's go to another uh, map here. I'll go to map inset uh, that we created in episode two. And let's go to the next option, which is living atlas. So here I've got the living atlas, which is an amazing uh, compilation of different kinds of layers and tools available in the living atlas. And you can check that out from Esri through your browser. And here I'm going to search for, let's, let's do terrain. That's a really wonderful layer. So I'll choose terrain and see what we get. And now we have a bunch of different layers and feature classes and web maps and all kinds of things related to terrain. Let's go ahead and pull in um, a particular layer here. Let's grab this layer of terrain and I'll drag it into my data view. And now it should add the raster terrain to the landscape. All right, there we go. We can see we have overall elevation of 8,700 to negative 450 in meters here. And so let's go ahead and zoom down to this area of the world here near the Himalayas. All right, we'll turn off this so we can see even better. 
Let's go down here to the Brahmaputra River and this braided river system. It's remarkable. All right, let's go about right here is good. And now I'll turn back on the terrain. And now we can see it's, it's totally dark and can't really see much. So uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, adjust this layer. Okay, so here I want to show you that we have selected this layer. And notice at the top, we now have this image service layer and data tab. These appeared when we clicked on terrain. If I click off of it to something like world topographic map, notice it changes to vector tile layer. These tabs are called contextual tabs or contextual uh, service properties. And so here, these contextual tabs give us some more details about the particular thing that we're interested in, in this case, terrain. So if I click on image service layer for the contextual tab, now I have a ribbon that deals with this particular layer. And so any kind of layer that we have in the contents pane will have a contextual layer associated with it where we can adjust different things like the cartography or transparency or other things. In this case, I'll go ahead and do a dynamic uh, range adjustment for this to just get the actual uh, uh, raster uh, elevation values just in this view itself. See what we get. All right, now we can see everything is, is much more clear now. We can actually see the braided river system because we did this uh, dynamic range adjustment. And you can see our values have changed as well. And if we want to mess around with the symbology, we could, we could do that right here with the different stretches. Or we could right-click on the layer and choose symbology itself. And we get the symbology tab. And in this case, maybe we'll change the color ramp to something Oh, let's maybe go from like maybe a, a greenish to a brown. Yeah, let's do this one right here for elevation 11 just to see what the visualization looks like for us. I'll go ahead and close that symbology tab as this loads in. All right. And now we can see this environment and its braided river system. As we maybe zoom in, we can now see the areas of deposition as this will load in for us and give us this nice view. And so here you can see we're just incorporating the living atlas layer for terrain, which means you can pull in all of these different layers that are being served from ArcGIS Online by different ArcGIS servers around the world and, and, and online services, and as well as the living atlas, a very, very powerful incorporation right inside of ArcGIS Pro. But it it's, it's, gets better. You can actually create web maps straight from this environment. So if we go to share, we could actually author a web map straight to our portal area in our contents pane. So if I click on web map and start sharing this, I can begin to fill in these details to actually share with different audiences, everyone or specific groups or my, my Calvin University organization. Like we can share these as web maps or web layers. And if you have an enterprise level uh, license and you have uh, an administrator who turns these things on, you can create address locators, geodata services, and even web uh, authored tools. And so the power that's really here to uh, combine and author web maps that are interactive and have multiple different layers is so powerful. And my students are, are creating these amazing products of interactive web maps that they can easily convert with ArcGIS.com into web applications. And they're deploying these throughout the world. And it's really, really exciting. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about how to integrate ArcGIS Online inside of ArcGIS Pro. Thanks again for your participation in all things map on this channel and for giving my videos a like and subscription. Have a good day.